ethics and patient safety i am professor sugra parvin dean of surgery and if you have any query you can put your questions and i will give answers in the end with separate lecture so what what do you mean by surgical ethics it means in normal life everybody has certain ethics to pass the life so in the surgery also we have ethics so we will go through the definition identify the issues in the surgical ethics and why it is important what are the boundaries what is basically autonomy and what is informed consent and why confidentiality is important and what are the regulation and maintenance for these uh, important for these surgical ethics and is there any aspect of surgical research and good surgical practice so the word ethics is derived from the greek word which means character so to put for it formally ethics is the branch of the philosophy that defines what is good for the individual and for the society and establishes the nature of obligations or duties that people owe themselves and one another now we really in in these days not remembering what are the ethics even in to 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 be in the home you must remember the ethics so greek healers in 4th century bc uh, bc drafted the hippocratic oath and pledge to prescribe regime for the good of my patients according to my ability and my judgment and never do harm to anyone now this is what is our oath so ethics is an essential discipline in the practice of the surgery it represents your best understanding of moral responsibility if you are operating somebody it means you are wholly solely responsible for the body of that person so it evolves as reason reflection on clinical experience I, i always say when you operate a patient of acute appendicitis remember if this patient is your own son or daughter is your own sister or brother is really there is an indication of operating this acute appendicitis so role of surgeon is to act as the patient's fiduciary now what is fiduciary it is the person to whom property or power is entrusted for kehte hain na ki behosh hone ke baad allah ke hawale yahan par behosh hone ke baad surgeon ke hawale surgeon kuch bhi kare so ethical study investigates what should be our character and conduct morality is subject to reexamination and improvement now ideas of justice and fairness require critical assessment and improvement ethical argument should maintain relevance now what are the issues related with the surgical ethics it is there are basically five important uh, issues one is autonomy informed consent confidentiality research and excellent standards so what is autonomy do you know what is autonomy it is the respect respect the autonomy of the patient it means patient is responsible for his or her treatment you have to recognize the rights of the patients if patient is allowing you to do something you will be allowed otherwise now so patient have right to make choices over their surgical care so respect for autonomy is the basis for informed consent and advances directive for example a very clear example if somebody who is a candidate for mastectomy for carcinoma breast but patient is not giving you the consent that i want breast conservation now your responsibility is to give all pros and cons and then respect the decision of the patient that is the autonomy now information now no information is important because without information you cannot allow patient to act as an autonomist because explanation of patient's disease explanation of untreated natural history recommendations of most appropriate surgery discussion of risk and benefit anticipated outcome prognosis treatment alternative now this is also known as informed consent it means you have to tell that this disease can be treated surgically can be treated with the medical um, ways now what surgery there are different types of surgery what are the pros and cons of surgery you have to tell all the alternatives so comes again consent now you see for taking consent you have a very good venue which is calm and quiet 
consent must be in a patient's own language in a simple language and you must give time to the patient to take the decision you know the principal person who's doing the surgeon surgery is the surgeon now you have to record whatever you talk to the patient and whatever patient said to you you have to do the entry in on your case record copy so attention information must be very accurate and reasonably complete now this is very important that you have to avoid the technical language now patient don't know what is acute appendicitis patient don't don't know what is the pancreatitis so you have to tell simple words alternative for those and if there is a problem in understanding between you and the patient there must be some translator there and you have and it is your responsibility to clear all the doubts of the patient now there are certain practical difficulties even you tried a lot but patient is unable to understand and patient simply refuses no i don't want surgery but you think this patient really needs surgery if we will not operate there is a danger to the patient so these are known as practical difficulties means when patient refuses or tempor our temporary patient is unconscious you are not able to take the consent from an unconscious patient or children less than 18 years or minors who are legally incompetent or incompetency for example patient is a psychiatric patient or patient is unable to listen or to tell that is deaf and dumb so there are certain incompetencies now in these things in unusual circumstances when patient is close to the death no evidence shows that a specific treatment desired by the patient will provide any benefit from any perspective the physician need not provide such treatment if there are no treatment options then the patient is the brain dead and the family insists on treatment if there is nothing that the physician can do treatment must stop noted in case sheet along with senior clinicians agreement now you have to have a two persons who are agreed on that the patient is brain dead there is no need of treatment but patients attendants are insisting for the treatment and you have to stop the treatment now confidentiality very important and in every aspect of the life you see confidentiality is important and the principle of confidentiality is that the information a patient reveals to a surgeon is private and has limits and how and when it can be disclosed to a third party so you have to ask the patient do you want to involve anybody else in this discussion if patient allows and patient says yes then you can involve any third person so the patient and the person treating the patient have right to dignity now breaking confidentiality there are certain conditions when you have to break the confidentiality if the patient is threat to self or others or other team members treatment options public interest or court order in these conditions you can break the confidentiality now research what is the role of research there surgeons have a subsidiary responsibility to improve operative techniques through research to assure their patient that the care proposed is the best now if you are doing certain procedure in certain patients and you want to see whether this procedure is good or bad it means you are making this as a part of your research it is your responsibility ethical responsibility to take the permission from the patient that we are involving your case in our research so the administration of such regulation is through research ethics committee and surgeons should not participate in research that has not been approved by such bodies so we have to maintain good standards good standards everywhere counts a lot to optimize success in protecting and health to an acceptable standard surgeons must only offer specialized treatment in which they have been properly trained for example i am not trained in robotic surgery because i don't have robot in my hospital and if somebody or patient wants robotic surgery i must explain this thing to the patient and refer this patient to a place where robotic surgery can be 
offered to that patient. So to do so will entail sustained further education throughout a surgeon's career in the wake of new surgical procedures. It means every surgeon, whether he is double FRCS or whatsoever, there is an ongoing training. We, we need training at every corner of our life. To do otherwise would be to place the interest of the surgeon above that of the patient an imbalance that is never morally or professionally acceptable. So that is related with the surgical ethics. Now patient safety. Now patient is wholly solely dependent on the surgical team and we have to take care of the patient from all aspects. What are those aspects? So patient safety is the absence of preventable harm to a patient during the process of healthcare. For example, a very simple reason, when you are shifting a patient to operation theatre from the ward, now it is the ward boy or nursing attendant, but you as a surgeon is responsible, you have to take care that during shifting patient may endanger any trauma or anything. For example, discontinuity of oxygen, for example, discontinuity of the IV solutions, if it is important to the patient. So the discipline of the patient safety is the, is the coordinated effort to prevent harm to the patient caused by the process of healthcare itself. Even the documents of the patient, the history of the patient, the case record of the patient, it, is, it all comes under the patient safety. So the prevalence of the adverse healthcare events, whenever there is any adverse healthcare event, you have to record, you have to inform. Who is, it estimates that even in advanced healthcare facilities availability, 1 in 10 patients receiving healthcare will suffer preventable harm. Very unluckily and sorry to say if somebody who is having problem in his or her right leg and surgeon operated the left leg due to error in documentation. You see this is a preventable harm and you cannot think about what problems can occur due to this thing. So the financial burden of the unsafe healthcare globally is also compelling resulting as it does in prolonged hospitalization, loss of income, disability, litigation costing many billions every year. Recently many initiatives to improve patient safety has been taken which has to some extent has reduced errors but still many issues not been resolved so an adverse event an incident that resulted harm to the patient a near miss a no harm event what is a near miss an incident that could have resulted in unwanted consequences but did not either by chance or through a timely intervention preventing the event from reaching the patient. A no harm event means an incident that occurs and reaches the patient but results in no injury to that patient. So it means harm is avoided by chances or due to mitigating. Now factors that contribute to patient safety incidents. Human factors. Inadequate patient assessment means delay in the diagnosis. A patient comes to you in the um, emergency with the pain in right iliac fossa. Patient is having acute appendicitis, but you thought it is UTI, it is urinary tract infection. So you just prescribe the antibiotics and treatment and send patient home. Again, patient, the same patient came to you in emergency with the perforated appendix. Now this is this is known as inadequate patient assessment, which is preventable. Now failure to use or in, interpret appropriate test. Now a junior doctor, a house officer, or a person who has not interpreted test properly, error in performance of operation, treatment, or test, inadequate monitoring or follow up of the treatment, deficiencies in training or experience, fatigue, overwork, time pressure personal or psychological factors that is depression or drug abuse, patient or working environment variations, lack of recognition of dangers of medical errors. So these are the incidents which contribute to the patient safety. Now there is there sometimes it is not only the healthcare worker, there is system failures also. 
so poor communication between healthcare providers so it means when you are leaving you are giving over to somebody but when you are not giving over there is a poor communication inadequate staffing level disconnected reporting system lack of coordination at handovers drug similarities environmental design infrastructure equipment failure due to lack of part or staff operator cost cutting measures by hospital inadequate reporting system now this is this is the system failure you are you know entering your data on the computer but because of the light problem your data has not recorded and few thought that you have recorded all the things so medical complexity advanced in new technologies potent drugs their side effects and interactions working environments int intensive care units operation theaters now understanding patient safety approach it is very important to understand what do you mean by patient safety the concept underlying patient safety incident is useful because it helps to anticipate situations that are likely to lead errors the problem of error can be viewed in two ways it could be due to any of the following that is error of commission and error of omission and error of execution now you have to understand the difference between commission omission and execution now what is commission it means you have done the wrong thing what is omission you have not done so failure to act you have not done you have not obeyed the orders error of execution it means you have done but you have done incorrectly so you tried to follow the order but you did it in an incorrect manner so this is the commission omission and execution and you may come across bcqs from this what is error of commission omission and execution uh, if i will be your example now the system approach a system approach to error recognizes that adverse events rarely have a single isolated cause and that they are best addressed by examining why the system failed rather than who made the mistake so individually you cannot say that this person is responsible for this you have to make the whole system responsible for these things so there is a pyramid patient safety pyramid known as henrich safety pyramid it all written in the bale and love also you can go through these slides this is a bit boring but you have to go through it says that unsafe acts or near misses leads to minor injuries and over time to a major injury the accident pyramid proposes that for every 300 near misses there are 29 minor injuries now this is all mathematics but the key message is that near misses provide the best data about the reliability of the safety system it is most important to report near misses now it's very important as well as adverse events to reduce the errors kehte hain na jungle mein mor nacha kisne dega lekin agar hum batayenge to sabko pata chalega so strategies for patient safety many organization in such countries have developed important strategies that is regulating and licensing of physicians and healthcare institution same as Uh, pmdc here in uh, our part of the world developing and adopting policies for patient safety and quality improvements providing patient safety education program institutional national clinical audits reporting and learning from adverse events setting up agencies to resolve concerns about the practice of doctor so, so same comes the cmes what is continuous medical education when we realize that many general practitioners many doctors who are not aware of latest things we started making the important thing that is cmes that is continuous medical medical education hour you must have minimum this number of hours to get your pmdc renewed they have many challenges in patient safety the probability of a patient to get harm in a hospital is higher for example the risk of hospital related infection poor sterilization of medical equipments reuse of syringes of needles the hospital strategies team working and training to avoid safety errors medical team training programs have been developed internationally which are further divided into critical care teams operating room emergency department 
well educated and properly trained staff can reduce risk to the patient themselves and their colleagues and that is actually known as this what is known as the there is a list which is known as safety checklist now we as a surgeon always see that checklist and tick that checklist checklist before shifting patient anywhere so you using informant uh, informant technology health information regarding medical errors should be collected properly and kept safe in electronic system as paper based record systems are more susceptible to error good example include electronic patients records and physician order entry system for medication prescribing now patient safety in the surgeon diagnostic and management errors resuscitation errors prophylaxis error for example patient need prophylaxis for the dvt deep vein thrombosis you have to ask patient to uh, use the ted stocking but you didn't remember to write down in your post operative orders that this patient need dvt prophylaxis so it is important prescription errors situation awareness identification and treatment errors technical and operative errors situation awareness the wrong patient in operating room a patient who is supposed to have an cholecystectomy is in operation uh, or one will shift it to or two where somebody is supposed to do thyroidectomy so the wrong patient in operating room surgery performed on the wrong site wrong procedure performed failure to communicate changes in the patient's condition anesthetist is sitting talking with his or her colleague and patient's oxygen saturation is going down and down and he didn't able to look at that disagreements about proceedings retain instruments or swabs so it means when you are starting the operation you have to count the instruments and swabs when you are ending the uh, operation you have to count the instruments and swab and declare that the swab count is correct it is very very important so this is no, which i was talking before surgical safety checklist you have to go through that i am not going to to read this now technical and operative errors failure in operative technique include cognitive error of judgment such as failure or later conversion of lab cholecystectomy into open procedure now this is uh, something which initially for example surgeon and think that this patient is operable laparoscopically but per operatively there are certain adhesions and patient a surgeon has to convert it to open cholecystectomy procedural when the steps of operation is not followed or omitted executional when too much force is used resulting in damage that may or may not have consequences misinterpretation misuse of instrument for example you used diathermy excessively and there are chances of diathermy burns also iatrogenic injury so incidents can be defined as events that could have resulted in unintended or unnecessary serious harm so that is known as never events you really don't want never events 